Hello and welcome to another pen video from me, Penultimate Dave. So this is the third and final uh, video in the series of my top 10 fountain pens that I have purchased in 2018. Now if you haven't watched the top 30 or the top 20 pens, then I would definitely suggest you go and watch those now. Um, uh, if you have watched them, you will know that I started off purchasing 58 fountain pens this year um, and I managed to in the top 30 reduce that 58 down to 30 fountain pens the top 20 I managed to reduce from 30 down to 20 and now I have the top 10 fountain pens now these pens here are not my top 10 so I thought I would just tease you here so First off, I'm going to show you which pens did not make the cut for my top 10 fountain pens. Now, as I've mentioned before in previous videos, uh, all of these pens are lovely writers. Uh, I love the material on these pens. It's just for whatever reason, I've had to reduce them down to my top 10 favourites. So, there might be a huge difference between the writing experience on some of these versus some that will get into the top 10 um, but equally there could be hardly any difference and I've just had to choose so um, all of these are really nice looking pens they're really nice writers so it has been an incredible journey for me to try and reduce down to a top 10 favorite pens of 2018 and if you have kids or if you have pets trying to pick which ones are your most favorite is a ridiculous task and uh unfortunately i've had to do this and i i really really have had issues i recorded the top 30 and the top 20 videos uh a couple of weeks ago and uh i since come down with the flu and i'm still suffering a little bit from the flu um but I have in those last couple of weeks for this top 10 list changed the pens almost daily because I'm still not sure which should make it into the top 10 list. So if you ask me tomorrow or you ask me in a week or two or in a month or two, obviously that list is going to change. But here are the 10 pens that did not make the cup. So left to right here, we have the um, Atelier Lusso Andromeda and this is the Tectonic Seas and it's a beautiful material uh, this was handpicked by myself and I really do love this it comes with uh, Yovo uh, nibs and it's a broad nib it's a steel nib um, I could put a gold nib on here if I wanted to I chose to go with steel nibs because I like how the Yovo uh, broad nibs write and uh, and, and being steel nibs, they're quite stiff, but they're consistent writers, and and I really do like that. So that's a pen that I really do love, but I, I had to exclude because there are other pens that I needed to put in the top ten list. And then we have this one, which is the Armando Simone Club Bologna Extra, and this is the Wild Side Edition, and this is the Omas Wild Side. Um, celluloid and it's a lovely material and if you've watched my previous videos on where I've had these Armando Simone Club Bologna extra pens you'll realize that I really love the writing experience they're quite hefty pens they come with a lovely number eight size um, uh, Bok Magic Flex nib and they write exceptionally well and I really really would like to put this in my top 10 uh, but I decided that I would try to exclude duplicates as much as possible uh, and, and that includes really the same pen models but in a different material so if I didn't have that criteria set then that would have made it in there and then I have this uh, Opera Master Golden Dust and I picked this up uh, on the used market. I saw it and I realized I just had to have it. It's a stunning gold dust, smoky like finish. Uh, and like with all the Visconti Opera Masters, 
Um, it has a number six size nib, and this is a fine nib. It's a 23 cap palladium nib, and I don't normally do fine nibs. Now, I could swap this nib out for one of my other nibs, and it would become my favorite writer, but then one of my favorite writing pens would then not be one of my favorites. So I decided that that one had to not make the cut, and that hasn't made it into the top 10. Then there's the um, Pinida La Grande Bellezzas, and I do love these pens. This is a lovely uh, malachite finish on this pen. Uh, they're magnetic closures. Uh, it comes with this uh, lovely Bock nib, uh, and it's a 14 karat gold nib. And uh, with the cutouts on the nib, it's actually quite flexible. Um, not quite as flexible as some of my other nibs, like my Pilot Custom 823 FA, or my Scribo 2s, or even my ASC Bolognas. But it's still a pleasant experience. Now, as much as I do like this pen, uh, I think the retail price for it is a little too high, especially seeing it's a cartridge converter pen. And for me, even though I got a really good price on this pen, I do think that um, because of that, it didn't make the cut. Now, Penida have started doing mystery fillers, uh, which is like a Twisby Go uh, filler with a spring. They started doing piston fillers as well. Um, they tend to be in the seven eight hundred dollar range. So uh, again, that's a lot. Um, for the pen, for the material, it's an acrylic material. So, um, so for me, the Penida didn't quite make the cut. And then there's the um, Stilograph Corsani Etruria, and this is an ebonite uh, mixed with resin. And you can see it here. It has this lovely, lovely like wood grain effect going on. Um, and I picked this up at the uh, London Pen Show, and. Um, this has a lovely 14 karat gold nib, which is juicy wet and very flexible. And everybody that's tried writing with this pen have been in awe uh, with it because they have really loved the writing experience. Um, but again, for me, uh, there are slightly better pens uh, that, that I found that, that made the cut. Um, but I do love the material, and I do love the nib on that pen. And then there was this Leonardo, and this is the Mediterraneo. And the material here, it's a celluloid uh, material. It's gorgeous. Um, it has uh, a 14 karat gold nib on there, um, and it writes very well. Um, and I do love this material. It's an absolute stunning material. And um, like you see this material on other pens from Montegrappa. Uh, but again, there are other pens that tick a few more boxes, whether or not it's how they look, how they write, how they feel in the hand. And it was immensely difficult to try and work out which 10 made it and which 10 didn't. And... In terms of percentage, there's probably less than 1% between some of these pens that either made it or didn't make it. So it was immensely difficult. And if you know me well, you know that I like my Arco. And uh, these are the Omos. Uh, this is the uh, Milord, and this is the Arco uh, Brown. And this comes with a medium Omos nib. And I do like this nib. Um... And I do like how it writes. Uh, Omos Arco is a lovely um, shiny material there. And you can just see how it glistens uh, under light. But again, there are other pens that, that made the cut a little bit more. And then the same with this Omos Paragon as well. So uh, this is a, the, the smaller brother or smaller sibling. Um, and that also... This has a broad nib on it uh, from Omar's. And um, again, I I love how it writes. But again, there are like the difference between some of these nibs can be that they write 
wet, they write broad, um, and but there's a slight difference in feedback on them. Now on to the Visconti Opera Master, and this is the Corvina, and this is a true fay exclusive. I have this with a 23 carat um, uh, palladium stub nib here. Um, now, I like this material, but I like the Stardust a little bit more. So, if I had to pick between the two, the Stardust would make it. And likewise, uh, although I've been liking stubs recently, uh, in the last three or four months, I've started to go back to mediums and broads. So, at the moment, um, mediums and broads are in my rotation list. Now, we also have this Scribo 2. Now, this is uh, the um, Cardinal Red version. Uh, I have a Noble Green version, and as I mentioned earlier on, uh, I have tried to uh, ensure that um, there basically are no duplicates in the top 10 list. So, um, I had to choose between the Noble Green and the Cardinal Red. And for me, um, although I love this red, and I and I am partial to red inks, and I normally match the ink colour to the, the pen, and this has a lovely um, 14 carat flex nib, and this is the Omas 81 nib. Um, but again, I had to choose, so I like the green colour a little bit more. So, these are the 10 pens that unfortunately, did not make uh, the top 10 pen list. So, now on to the pens that did make the list. So, I'm going to do something a little bit different here. I'm actually going to do in order of how I think the pens um, fit in my top 10 list. So, I'll go in reverse order. So, number one will be obviously the best pen. And number 10 will be the least best pen out of those top 10 pens. So in at number 10, we have the Visconti Opera Master Stardust. And I really do love this material. The material is a complete Stardust effect. And the material is absolutely gorgeous. Now, I got this in a 23 carat palladium stub nib. So it's a 1.3 millimeter stub. And I love how this writes. I love the material. Um, it really is good. Now, why did it only come in at number 10? Because I am uh, favouring mediums and broads a little bit more in the last couple months. Uh, and that's really the only reason why it came in at number 10. Because this is a solid writer. It's a good workhorse writer. Uh, and you can see here by the material, it's absolutely gorgeous. So, in at number 9, we have the Visconti Homo Sapiens Bronze Swirl. Now, this is a stunning uh, swirl pattern that I have here on this Visconti. And I like this even more than my London Fog now. Uh, so, this is a, a very good favourite of mine. Um, I have it with a 23 cap Palladium Stub Nib, again. Um, and, the, like... This probably would be in my top three pens normally, but again, uh, I in the last couple of months I've started writing more with medium and broad nibs. So maybe in a couple of months' time, when I'm back writing with stub nibs more, um, this will be probably one of my top pens um, in the top three. But you can see here this material is absolutely stunning. So um, I really do love this pen. It's a gorgeous gorgeous pen to look at and it writes extremely well in at number eight we have the atelier lusso dragon and this was a pen that i had uh, commissioned i picked the material myself and this is why it's made in it's it's a stunning material and i didn't think it was going to come out this well uh it's a beautiful pen it's a very cylindrical pen uh, with no tapering and uh, very squared off ends, uh, has a coin finial here, and if I unscrew it, you'll see here it has a broad uh, Yovo nib on it. Uh, it's a beautiful pen. So for me, this is a pen that I really do like. In at number seven, 
we have the Atelier Lusso King Cobra. And this is, again, a stunning pen made by Eric at Atelier Lusso. I handpicked this material myself. I liked that it has a lot of this bronzy gold effect and the silver going on on the pen. And it also has a King Cobra. And it looks very much like a Mackie pen. Um, has a coin finial there. Um, again, very cylindrical. Uh, no tapering of the body. And uh, again, it has a broad Yovo steel nib on it. But again, I really do love how this writes. Uh, it's a beautiful, stunning pen, just as you can see here. That really is stunning stunning material so for me again this is a pen that writes really well for me um, and i do like it in at number six we have the montegrappa extra 1930 shiny lines dove now this is a lovely uh, shining lines material from montegrappa and this is a Goulet exclusive and i picked this up uh, in November and this really is a stunning material you can see here where the stacked celluloid goes the full length of the body now this is quite a, 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 a girthy pen uh, it has a, an 18 karat gold uh, Montegrappa nib there and I went with a medium nib and Although the nib isn't that bouncy or springy, it has a slight bounce to it. And I find that this is a really good, consistent writer. And again, it's a pen that I do like. So that made it into the top 10 as well. In at number 5, we have the Visconti Luxor Obelisk. Now, this is an absolute stunning pen. And... This pen really comes high in my collection. It's not a cheap pen either, um, but it's a ebonite-made pen, and uh, it has all this maquillé, Egyptian hieroglyphs, uh, on the body there. And it really looks lovely. And then it has some lacquer, um, and it really is a stunning pen. Now... If I undo this, I have a lovely 23 karat um, palladium medium nib on this pen. And it writes exquisitely well. Um, it has a little bit of a bounce to it. I really do like it. Uh, it's a power vac filler, so it holds a, a ton of ink. Um, and it's just completely unique. You don't see any pens like this around on the market today. So for me, this is a beautiful stunning pen so that made it into my top 10 list as well in at number four we have the visconti medici il magnifico now this is a stunning pen um, it comes in around 70 grams in weight the cap and the um, power vac filling knob are made of solid silver with an aged look uh, the section also has solid silver. It has a 23 karat palladium medium nib. And the body um, is made of solid marble. So this pen, for me, with a medium nib, uh, has a slight bounce to the nib. Um, but it, it's a solid workhorse writing pen for me. So for me, that pen definitely made it into the top 10. In at number three, we have the Visconti Speakeasy. Now, this has been a grail pen of mine for some time. And I know grail pens mean something different to every person. Um, some It means that it's a pen that is not obtainable, um, uh, not able to add to your collection. For me, it's a pen that is normally outside of my reach or... Um, not available or difficult to find um, but I can still add it to my collection and, and this is a beautiful pen um, it comes in this lovely uh, material and, and it, it's absolutely gorgeous but it's also a thick marker of a pen um, it doesn't have a huge ink capacity uh, but it has this lovely 23 karat palladium medium nib which is very very bouncy 
And when I say it doesn't have a lot of ink capacity, that's basically the the the, the amount of ink that you can get in the pen. Um, but I love how this writes. It's very bouncy nib, and it writes juicy wet. So for me, this is definitely one of my top 10 pens uh, for sure for 2018. In at number two, we have the Armando Simone Club Bologna Extra Arco Verde. Now, this is a stunning pen. I absolutely love Arco, whether or not it's Arco Brown or Arco Verde. But this material is really, really stunning. And I really do love it. And again, like this um, comes with the, the Bok um, number 8 size nib. It's a Magic Flex. It's an 18 karat gold. Um, now, I have actually changed tradition here. I think this up with a red uh, ink instead of a green ink. Um, but uh, only because I have four of these. And ideally, I'd love to put all four into my uh, top 10 list but I couldn't so um, because I, I am trying to ensure that I don't have duplicates in that list because I think it's a little bit unfair because if I had 10 pens all of the same make and model then I think it's a little bit unfair to to have them all in there um, because it, it wouldn't then uh, allow me to put any other pens in there so for me this is a really really good writing pen I love the nib, I love how it writes, uh, I love the look, I love the feel, I love the weight, and I love the size. So, this really ticks all of the boxes for me. Now on to my number one fountain pen for 2018. This uh, is the Scribo 2. It's green. Uh, I've I've been liking more green pens recently. There's a huge amount of chatoyance going on though in that body there that you can see, um, but it's it's not like the Arco Verdes or the Visconti Speakeasy. It's a fairly plain looking pen in terms of the shape, uh, in terms of the size. Um, but the thing that really, really makes it stand out is the 14 carat medium flex nib and these nibs write exceptionally well now if i could take this nib and put it into every single pen that i owned and it would fit i would do that this nib is gorgeous um it has a lot of flex to it it has um about as much flex uh, as a Pilot Custom 823 FA nib, but it's actually a lot more easier to flex. So you do have to be a little bit more careful when you flex it, because you don't want to spring those tines. But it has the OMAS OM81 nib on there. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous writer. So for me, this is my number one writing nib by far in my collection. And then the second best writing nib, I would say, is the Armando Simone Club Bologna Extra nibs. And I have had a little bit of variance between the nibs. Some write better than others, um, but generally they are all pretty good writing nibs. If you have one of those pens, I'm sure you will uh, agree with me. Um, but this nib really has made it. This is my top number one fountain pen for 2018 and I'm really interested to see what else Scribo can come up with because they have the new Phil uh, fountain pen coming out and they have some other pens that are uh, due for line up in 2019. So there you have it this is my top 10 fountain pen list of pens that I have purchased in 2018 if you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. If you'd like to see more of these top videos, then do let me know in the comments. I've been considering doing some top 10 fountain pens of all time um, that are my ultimate top 10 fountain pens, uh, or even by brand. Um, so do let me know if, if these videos uh, you do like watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next pen video. Bye-bye.